from the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Hello everybody and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're beginning a brand new study today. It's a very exciting study about your and my righteousness. You know, the day we gave our lives to Jesus, we were given righteousness. We were made to be righteous. Now, what does that mean? Because I believe that when we get a hold of the understanding of what righteousness is, we will see the glory of God manifesting in ways that we've never imagined. So let's awaken to righteousness. I'll see you later. How many of you are ready for life transformation? Now, if you weren't here last Sunday night, we're just going to have to trust that you can launch off that same base by grace. Amen. Because God spoke to us last week. And I say God because I know that I was speaking under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I understand when Paul said, I came to you in fear and trembling. It's because of the weight of what God has given us, the responsibility to be able to communicate. And sometimes God wants to speak to us and He places things in our hearts, but we can only speak it using the limitation of our natural language. But there's so much more to receive than what comes through the natural language. That's why Jesus would say things like, He used ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. And for that to manifest, we need to be in the presence of that anointing. Because it's through the anointing and the grace of God that He reaches into places that we normally wouldn't get to. That's why this Bible is text. Anyone could read this. An unsaved person could read this. And they would understand the stories that took place. They, they understand, you know, man went out to sow his seed, a fisherman caught fish, you know. That they could understand the basic. But the life of that word comes through the grace and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so, last Sunday evening when I ministered the word, I was putting into words much more. There was much more in my heart than what I could put into words. But... Everything I spoke was by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and it was transformational. I mean, by the time we had finished with that message, how many were here when there was just like a blanket of anointing just fell in this place? And just the time of consecration. And so it's that time of consecration that we're launching from for this word now. Amen. You ready for it? Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm glad Jesus said that. I'm glad he said that he's with us. Because this is not something you and I could do in our own ability. But when he says here that we must go make disciples. Notice he did not say make converts. Put people in chairs. Fill a building. He didn't say that. He said go Make disciples. Make a disciple. Now, who's he speaking to? Who's he speaking to? Make it personal. Ah. So he said, go make disciples. Amen. So that's an instruction from Jesus. 
Go make disciples. Now notice what he said yet. He said that we must baptize them in his name. Everybody say, his name. And then, teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. How many know that Jesus is teaching us a whole bunch of things? How to live our lives, how to live in the kingdom, how to operate kingdom principles. Jesus is teaching us all the time. And he says, we must teach others also. Family, this world out here that we live in, is full of people that do not know God, that do not know Jesus. And if they die in that state, they will go to hell. Now that's a reality. So who's going to get them saved? Pastor Helen? Who's going to get them saved? Each and every one of us. That is our responsibility. It is our responsibility to reach out to get people saved. And so many people seem to be, Christians seem to be nervous about their Jesus. Have you noticed that the world is not nervous about advertising? What they want to advertise, they put out there in a big way. Isn't that right? And what they do, they... We have the answers. The church is the answer to this world. The church is the answer to people's worries and concerns. The church is the answer to the destruction that's in this world. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack. The church is God's voice. You are His hands. You are His feet. Baptize them in His name. We need to make His name great. Amen. I'm preaching much better than your amens here. I said we need to make His name great. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's what I'm talking about. When I, when I mentioned what the, the greeting outside the door, why that in, got me so excited was because there's a zeal and there's an enthusiasm. We've got to get out of our dead lethargy and, lie and just dragging our feet around. Come to my church, it's really like I. You, know, you can be there and just be like me. Come on, people. We're born again. We have the greatest life available. We should be the most positive people on this planet. Stop seeing the negative in everything. Things happen, you say, wow, wasn't that awesome? Yeah, but no, that one. We need to be positive. Start seeing what God is doing. Celebrating the great. Celebrating that we are alive. Celebrate the fact that people around us are being touched by the Lord Jesus. I'm glad that God doesn't keep nitpicking and pulling out all my negatives and thinking every time. I mean, how do you know that each one single, every single one of us in this room makes mistakes? Come on. How many of you since you started out this year in January, you haven't messed up once? How many would say in the last month, you haven't messed up once? Week? Ooh, now I'm getting close to home. Hey, Amen. So we all make mistakes. 
Aren't you glad that God's not continuously pointing that out? He says, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. I'll forgive you. My grace is sufficient. I'll set you free. I'll get you out. Why? Because he knows that we are fallible. He knows we make mistakes. If we knew we could do it, he wouldn't have had to send Jesus to die for us. The very reason that Jesus died is because he knows I can't make it on my own without his blood. Hallelujah. And so if we want that for our lives, then we must be gracious to give that to others. Let them know about the goodness of our God. Make His name great. Come and have a look over here at Genesis chapter 11. Now, this is very interesting. I, I want to read this, and I know that as I read it, we're automatically going to think in a certain direction because that's the way it's taught most of the time. But I want us to see something else here. Now, the whole earth had one language and one speech. Are you there? Genesis 11. The whole earth had one language and one speech. Someone once asked me, they said, what language do you think there was? Maybe it was tongues. It was one language. They, I mean, Adam had, when, when he, Adam spoke to God, what do you think he spoke? Pastor Vessel says Afrikaans. <laughs> when God spoke with Adam, what language do you think they spoke? God speaks in the kingdom heavenly language, doesn't he? Adam would have learned that. And so he would have raised his kids in that. Hello, are you with me? Okay. That's just, now, please, you know, that's just someone asked me, and I thought, I can't say absolutely, yes, this is tongue. This is the heavenly language. That's just me, my opinion. Okay. If you like it, keep it. If you don't, we're not going to argue. Maybe it was Afrikaans. I can't tell you it wasn't. <laughs> And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plane. Well, that's not an aeroplane, eh? See, it was an aeroplane in Genesis. <laughs> now, this is an open field, a big open piece of land. In the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come! Let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Now listen to this. Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Now, now but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, now listen to what he says. Indeed, the people are one. And they all have one language. And this what they begin to do. This is what they begin to do. Now listen. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Now the problem here was that they were making their own name great. And God said, that's not going to happen. And that's when he birthed all these other languages. And all the other languages began. And so one guy was talking Italian, the other one was talking French, and the other one, are you with me? And so they couldn't understand each other, and that's why they called it Babel, because Babel means confusion. So there was now confusion. Because of the confusion, what they were trying to do was stop. And so, whatever man tries to do in his own ability has a cap to it. That's why when you see over history, how great nations rise up and become very strong and very powerful, 
but then they forget their God and they start to make their own name great. That thing has a ceiling and when it bumps the ceiling of Babel, confusion sets in and the whole thing falls over. That's exactly what's just happened now in the world economy. People think we don't need God anymore. We can write God out of the Constitution, write Him out of the laws, write Him out of the courts, write Him out of school. We don't need God. And look how clever we are. Look how big we are. We can run this planet with one currency and bam, it hits the ceiling and the whole thing fell over. The world's in confusion. That's all that we're seeing now. But I want you to get hold of this fact that God said that because... They had the technology. Bricks. The asphalt. They had technology. They were using it with one accord. And they would make their own name great. Now listen, family. If it's possible for man without the unction of God, without God in their lives, to do something that God said nothing can stop them, they could get the impossible done. How much more you and I who have Jesus in our lives, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the one true living God, and when we honor Him and we can make His name Great. When we come together as one voice, one people, one language, one purpose, and God says nothing will be withheld from them. Let's make the name of Jesus great. Let's make the name of Jesus great. We have the technology. We have the ability. And we have the greatest gift within us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God is for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Once God's on your side, family, no one can stop you. Jesus is building his church. The gates of hell will not stop it. Jesus is building his church. And you and I get to do it together with him. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to come out of its sleep. Amen. I said it's time for the church to come out of its sleep. Come with me to Mark 14. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Wake up. Only this side saying it. Say it again. Wake up. Let me hear it. Shall I use a scriptural term? There may be people who will want to say. Awake. Now it's in the Bible. Shout that out. Mark chapter 14, verse 37. Now this is Jesus. He's in the garden. And he's going through that time of prayer before he goes to the cross. Verse 37. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon. Uh, 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 uh. Isn't he, when he was called Simon, said, You're no longer Simon, now I call you Peter. See, Simon means a reed. Easily broken, blown around. Peter is a rock. He says, Now you may have been called Simon all your life. Blow around, break, whatever. I'm calling you Petros. Rock. Amen. Now he finds him sleeping. Oh, come on. Now you've been Simon again. <laughs> the Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray 
Lest when you enter into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hello? I mean, you know what that means. How many of you can sense in your heart God is doing something? How many of you know God is calling you? How many of you sense God's calling you to a higher standard, a higher life? How many you sense God saying, I need to spend more time with you? How many you sense God saying, I need to spend more time in the Word? How many you sense that? But you notice your flesh says, oh, 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 tired man I'm tired I'm tired yeah I'm not surprised because it's the enemy that comes to steal and if he gets us so busy that we are tired and we're doing things we shouldn't be doing as Jesus said my burden is light my yoke is easy amen and he says here, the flesh is what's weak. But notice what he says. If you would spend time with me, the Spirit's willing. The Spirit's willing. I said the Spirit's willing. How many you want to see the church of Jesus Christ explode into a working force that will penetrate this city and get it saved? We all willing. But Gary says the problem is they were sleeping. Come, let's have a look at Luke chapter 9. Now, Jesus took Peter, John, and James aside. And while they were there, well, let's read it, verse 28. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And he, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. In other words, the glory penetrated his skin. It started showing on the outside. Hallelujah. This veil of skin suddenly wasn't hiding who he really was anymore. It started showing up. And behold, verse 30, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. Oh my. They were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw His glory. Now, I don't want to read too much into this. And I don't want to spend too much time around it. What I want to draw our attention to, and, and this is what I see here, is Peter has already been addressed about sleeping. And yeah, he's sleeping again. Alan Bag Ministries is coming to your area. This weekend, Dr. Alan Bag will be ministering at Christian Family Church, Johannesburg, the ministry of Dr. Theo and Beverly Volmars. For information regarding this engagement, please contact us at these details. How do you want to see the Church of Jesus Christ explode into a working force that will penetrate this city and get it saved? Creation waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. I am with you. Jesus says, I am with you. God designed us to be like Him. He created us to do what He says we can do. And He created us to possess what He said we can have. Recognize that you have been made the righteousness of God. It's time for God's sons to awake to righteousness. Well, rise up. Wake up. Rise up with the Word of God on your lips and see lives transformed by the power of God. Awake to righteousness. 
Recognize that you have been made the righteousness of God. Call us at these details and purchase your series today. Many, many people are expecting miracles. And here's the good news. God has already done everything that we need to see everything that He's promised manifest in our lives. He has made us the righteousness of God. When we recognize that and we awaken to it, we're going to see these things start to manifest. I want you to get a hold of this. Listen to it. Study it out. Let the faith of God rise in your heart. And when we awake to righteousness, you're going to see the same miracles happening in Jesus' life happening in yours. It's time. So get yours today. Now listen, my friend. If you've not yet made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I want you to know He loves you. He gave His life for you. He died and then rose from the dead. The Bible says if we believe that and confess it with our mouth that He's Lord and Savior, we'll be saved. And so if you've never yet prayed that prayer, I want to pray it with you today. So join me right now, right there where you're watching. Say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, say it out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you. You gave your life so that I could have life. And then you rose from the dead. And today you're alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You are my Savior. Right now, I'm born again. A child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my dear friend. If you just prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you. And you are born again. I want to help you in your new walk with Jesus. This card's going to explain what's happened. And there's some guidelines now that you are a Christian. Also, there's a Bible study and how to read your Bible through in a year. And then this great CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. Now, that's my free gift to you. I want to send it to you. I'll even pay the postage. If you just call us on that phone number or write to me at that address, as soon as we got your details, we'll send that off to you. Welcome to the family. Well, that's all we have time for today, and we look forward to being with you again soon. This is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. If you are in the Cape Town area this weekend and would like to be a part of the Bay meeting together in multiple locations, join us at any one of our live link centers for an exciting time in the presence of God. We have a Saturday evening service from 6 p.m. at our Helderberg Live Center, as well as two Sunday morning and one Sunday evening service at all our live link centers. We have our main center in Gantt Center in Fabric Street, Somerset West. We also have a center in Cape Town Southern Suburbs at 11 Sealy Street in Steenburg. Our Cape Town City Live Center is at the pavilion right on the V&A waterfront. For any information regarding our service times and locations, please visit us online or contact us at these details. Alan Bag Ministries has made the teaching from today's Wisdom for Life program as well as the entire series of teachings available on CD and DVD. To order this teaching or series, contact us at this number or these addresses and we will send it to you as soon as we can. 